So, I love desks. I love audio, I love computers. Uh, I also have an equal love for wire management. Uh, and so I've chased this pretty hard for quite a few years. Uh, and this desk is a culmination of my previous career uh, where I had wanted to build a podcasting slash editing area when I was editing my own videos and doing all of my own production. Uh, and then I also had uh, had my wealth management Windows workstation. So I had my Mac set up, dual monitor, and then a separate workstation. And I'd come up with this idea that an L-shaped desk would be best because then I can have you know multiple multiple areas of work. Uh, and the long-term goal, the life goal, has always been to have a desk out or looking out into the garage, you know, where I get to sit my car right next to where I'm at, and so that's what we have here today. So the first thing I did on this desk was uh, was to choose the frame, and I've been using Uplift desks uh, for several years now. You know, Uplift makes the uh, makes the frame portion. Uh, they don't make a custom size top and I needed a very specific L shape in order to fit this area of the garage. Uh, the concept here was to have a kind of a seamless top uh, with a small gap uh, in between the sonic array and the actual, you know, the actual L-shaped desk in order to be able to have room to run the wires behind it as well as create a very, very tight, very even channel uh, between the, the movable desktop and the fixed on a cabinet. Uh, so we chose an uplift desk frame, which is adjustable, expandable in this matte black finish, uh, and then uh, chose the, uh, the, the bluish hue, which kind of fits the you know, obsessed garage ther sterile theme here. Uh, but the sonic cabinet, the, the concept there was so that when you guys are on camera and you get to look behind, I thought it'd be really cool to have some matte black uh, cabinets behind me and it actually turned out to be extremely functional from a desk perspective. Now that uh, you can get a pretty significantly sized hard drive and a MacBook Pro relatively economically uh, I, uh, uh, with the purchase of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I like the ability to be able to take my workstation uh, with me. Uh, and being it's an i9 16 inch display, uh, I spend a lot of time on, you know, on, my, on my couch you know, watching uh, sports or uh, Netflix and researching product uh, and also editing video at times. And so my preference is to have a portable machine rather than a fixed workstation, uh, especially since you know, I don't spend a lot of time sitting at this desk for hours on end. I'm mobile, I'm moving around all over the place. And so taking a, a rain design stand, which looks clean, and tying up the wires so that in as little wires as possible using the Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt connectivity, it has plenty of uh, processing power for what I'm doing. Uh, like this video, I'm not editing. You know, Michael and Mike and Bryce take care of that. And we have much more stout you know, Windows workstations to take care of that. I wanted a, Ma a Mac Pro, uh, but to spend you know, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars on a machine to uh, surf the internet and follow up on YouTube comments didn't make a whole lot of sense. But what I did want is an amazing display. And so I bit the bullet, I bought the $7,000 um, uh, stand and uh, nano glass display. I hated it at first. Uh, we had a major issue. If you go back and watch the original video, uh, I had run uh, RCA cables instead of XLR to our audio interface and was getting a hum or a buzz, which we fixed by simply using uh, balanced XLR cables. But now I've grown to love the display. And when you first look at it, if you start to micromanage it, you can see the texture of the nano glass. But because I have some pretty insane lighting here in the garage, uh, glare would be an issue on a screen that has, uh, you know, has a normal, you know, normal gloss screen. So paying the extra thousand bucks for the nano texture glass actually worked out really well. So that's connected via Thunderbolt to the Mac. The other nice thing about the Pro Display is that it powers my Mac, so I can eliminate another wire. Uh, and so I'm simple. I can simply run two two wires: one Thunderbolt 3 to the display, one Thunderbolt 3 to my audio interface, and that's the only connectivity I need. Easy to put my laptop in place on the Rain Design stand and call it a day. 
the display uh, also one of the disadvantages to it is that um, it's taller and it doesn't have an onboard camera uh, but I decided to end up doing the the Logitech uh, camera that's designed specifically for the the Mac display I put my chair up as high as I can and try to stay in frame uh, and try to look at the thing but that is the one disadvantage is that when I'm doing zoom calls and things like that having the bigger taller display with a camera mounted all the way on the top can be you know somewhat problematic um, but it looks so darn good that i decided to just <laughs> stick with it uh, and that logitech display connects via usb uh, c uh, right to right to the, the back of the display and it comes with a little 90 degree cable that you know plugs in nicely and, and sets up well so audio and this is another overkill thing that I'm doing for my application. You know, I'm not, I'm not a sound engineer, but I really enjoy crisp, clean quality audio. And I, had, I have a love for headphones uh, and uh, two-channel speakers. Uh, and so because this is my sort of flagship uh, spare no expense setup, uh, I decided to uh, spend the money and do uh, Dynaudio uh, LYD5s. Uh, so these are studio monitors. They have their own amplifier. Uh, and so all I need to do is get the signal, get audio to them via, via an XLR connection. Uh, but I need some sort of interface in order to control them to get the audio out of the computer, processed and into the speakers. Uh, and so I've had my heart set on doing a universal audio interface uh, forever. Uh, I chose the Twin X uh, so I could adjust. I could also accept uh, microphone input. And so the UA uh, Twin X is my audio interface that uh, really is just a volume control for these fancy speakers. I found that it was uh, the bottom end was lacking. I really wanted to do LYD8s, but the footprint of the speakers were too large to fit in this, in this setup. Uh, and so I did buy the nine inch uh, LYD version of the subwoofer uh, that, uh, that sort of matches the, the speakers, if you will. Certainly overkill, uh, certainly rather, uh, rather expensive, uh, but I'm such a Dynaudio fan. I prefer a silk dome, you know, typical you know, analog old school driver, uh, and it's really hard to beat a, a Dynaudio mid-range driver, uh, but their, 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 their high frequencies are really what, what work for me. And I also wanted to set up a set of headphones. Uh, and so uh, I bought a set of um, Odyssey LCD Xs. Uh, I'm not in love with them. They're big, they're bulky, they're heavy, they look fancy. Uh, they were, what, about $1,300. And then I needed a headphone amplifier as well as a good set of cables. And so I bought some Moon Audio uh, silver, silver cables. Having quality cables, and I chose the, uh, the monolith. Uh, THX uh, headphone amplifier uh, and I do have to go into the MIDI control of the of the Apple to switch back and forth uh, depending on uh, which you know which I want to listen to the speakers or the headphones uh, but that setup is nice and then I have uh, you know a little headphone uh, headphone rack or headphone mount it's a dual headphone mount so I can wrap up my cable and hang it and then hang the headphones next to it and they sound pretty incredible when I do use them they're open back uh, so I figured it's my garage, and so having an open back, if, um, if I'm bothering other people in here, it's, uh, they're working on a car or something anyway. But I'm using a Shure SM7B, which is my favorite microphone. Uh, I didn't add a cloud lifter, which would add gain, uh, clean gain. I didn't it, it felt, feel I don't need it with the uh, Universal Audio interface that has its own built-in preamp. Uh, I do have to run quite a bit of gain on the preamp, but, um, but it, it seems to work well, pretty noiseless. Uh, but picking the microphone boom uh, is difficult. Uh, there are lots of uh, well-documented versions from Rode and uh, some other companies, but Yellow Tech is the standard. The problem with Yellow Tech is there's not a lot of information about them. Uh, I've kind of figured out how they work. These are designed for radio studios and production studios, uh, but I chose their XL version, knowing that I needed to get it up over the speaker and then turn it, turn the microphone up to try to keep it out of frame. The uh, Yellow Tech boom comes unterminated. You have to terminate your own XLR connection. Uh, you also, I also had to drill a hole in my fancy custom desk that I'd ordered, uh, which was rather nerve wracking. In order to put the receiver uh, for the Yellow Tech mic is uh, again a nerve wracking procedure, but it, it worked out. 
So uh, the Mac keyboard and Mac mouse is sitting on a, it's a Amazon special neck, N-E-K-M-I-T neck mitt. Uh, leather uh, pad or desk pad. I like to have a larger desk pad rather than a mouse pad for my keyboard to keep my desk from getting all scratched up. But I chose the Mac keyboard and Mac mouse um, mainly for how it looks. Uh, it functions well. I'm so used to that tactile feel uh, or tactile feel of the uh, of the Mac keyboard. I know it's not the best keyboard in the world, uh, but I'm so used to using those. It looks well, functions well. I don't have to have any dongle, so I don't find it at a disadvantage. I certainly find it an advantage aesthetically, and it's slim, small. Uh, I have the, you know, the, the numeric part of the keypad. Uh, I'm so used to that that I, when I try to use a mechanical keyboard, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, I just don't, I don't like it. And again, I'm not typing up novels. I'm following up on uh, YouTube comments and, and uh, writing descriptions for our uh, products. So I find that it's, it's functionally uh, excellent enough for me. So now that we have all this stuff, of course, we have lots of wires. Uh, and this is where the time comes in. Uh, I'd figured this out uh, back when I built that desk in my wealth management office. I bought at least a half a dozen different wired chase products to try to figure out how am I going to get the wires to where they need to go without seeing them. Um, they're not completely hidden, um, but it does look clean, organized. I want, an umbil I want umbilical cords, not a rat's nest of wires all over the place. And so I try to tie wires up as much as I can. Uh, I'm not a big fan of wire looms, you know, that cover up the wire. I prefer to just zip tie and keep it, uh, keep it clean and neat. Uh, and yes, I'll be, I'm, I'm willing to, if I do change out a product, I'll just cut the zip ties and rewire it. I know that takes some time. I know a lot of people prefer to use, uh, you know, Velcro straps, but I prefer to make it permanent and then just fix it if I have to. The chase that I found that works the best is to reverse mount uh, a Bison office. Uh, you find them on Amazon, we'll put the link in the description. It's the only company I've found that makes a metal uh, wire chase. All the others are plastic, tend to be floppy. Uh, and then what I do is I, I bought a 12 outlet power strip that I put underneath and that power strip uh, affords me the ability to tuck the wires and keep them as hidden as possible uh, and trying to run as many wires through that chase. Uh, and I had to do the same thing on the wall in order to get the subwoofer connected. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that the desk moves up and down, you know, from 30 inches to roughly 60 inches. Uh, and so I needed to find a plastic chase in order to be able to run the wires up, but have it so that it was loose enough that I could move uh, back and forth or up and down. The only thing I'd like to change is, uh, is the, you know, the, there was a refrigerator in this location. So underneath the desk is a big, you know, water location that uh, you can really only notice if you're laying down on the floor. Um, but, uh, but the wiring, I think we did, I think it did a good job of getting it out of the way, getting it organized. We didn't detach anything for the video. Everything is wired up and functional. Uh, this is what it looks like all the time. You can see the pigtails of the power cord, uh, but to me, as long as it's done well and tied up nicely, uh, it, uh, it, it looks as, as though uh, I put some care into it. I laid on my back for many hours to get it to look like that. Last thing is uh, the flooring in the garage is Swiss Tracks rib tracks. It's the traditional type with a sort of rounded top. Uh, and so when you roll around on a chair, it makes a bit of noise. It still rolls functionally, uh, but rib tracks also makes a smooth tile. Uh, and so I was able to kind of carve out an area and put the smooth tile in so that my desk chair, uh, which is a human scale freedom uh, in, uh, again, it's, uh, it's B-I-Z-O-N, bison, bison leather, uh, is what I chose for the chair. Uh, but the combination of the chair and the, and the, the smooth tiles makes it roll more freely. Uh, I love the look of the chair. I love sitting in the chair. Uh, that chair is kind of noisy. Uh, so I was between a Herman Miller Aeron, which is sort of the standard office chair, and the, the beautiful look of the, of the human scale. I chose the human scale. I had this uh, at, uh, at my office, my wealth management office. It's a really expensive chair. I think it was around $2,200 or something like that. I knew I'd have this chair 
chair for a really long time. It does, you know, because of the way it looks and functions, it does click and clack a little bit. Uh, and it's comfortable to sit in. It just, it, it just makes quite a bit of noise. Uh, the last thing was a garbage can. Uh, this is a simple human uh, 20 liter, I believe, a little 20 liter stainless steel garbage can. Uh, and I like the, uh, I like the simple human garbage bag. So I spend the extra money so that the garbage bags fit specifically. They have a, they have a, um, a letter coated system for their garbage cans, uh, which I like. You're going to pay a premium for that. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, to me, I think it's worth it. It uh, also hides the little area of the baseboard that I had to notch out in order to get the desk to fit perfectly, uh, where I miscalculated setting up the frame on the desk. Uh, but we'll pretend like I didn't do that. You know, functionally, the desk, uh, I want it to look clean, I, but I also want it to function. I want to be able to stand up. Uh, I also want to be able to host someone at the other side of the desk. But having a stand-up desk, to me, I think is really worthwhile. Uh, it affords me the ability, especially in my garage, uh, if I'm working on a project or something and I'm, uh, I need to go check something, I'll generally put the desk up proper height. I wanted the ability to, when the desk is stored, when I'm not using it, to have it at the same exact height as the, as the fixed cabinets behind it. Uh, and so I have three different heights programmed into the keypad, my seated height, my, uh, my standing height, uh, which is a little taller than the sonic cabinet array, and then the, you know, the, uh, I guess the pretty height, you know, the height where it, it matches the entire countertop so it looks like one big seamless, seamless setup. So the things in the future, the, the only thing I could see changing is uh, I'm going to be putting some, uh, some wall treatments, some, a big mural of one of my garage or one of my cars in the garage uh, behind the display. Uh, GIK Acoustics makes these amazing um, wall art acoustic treatments or acoustic panels. We'll be putting that up high above my above the display you see behind me. But other than that, I think the desk is complete. Uh, it's uh, it's functioning well. It um, it serves the purpose where I can grab my my laptop, take it home, bring it back, plug it in in two seconds pull it out and bring it over here to the, you know, to the Sonic Array. If I was working on some project, uh, I can listen to music, I can record uh, voiceovers, I can record a podcast, I can, do, uh, I can do conference calls. It really serves the function. And then the key for me is that I can sit here at my chair and look at my car on the lift uh, and just enjoy being in the garage. That's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and so it serves as a fully functioning office desk setup, but is in my garage, which is the best of both worlds. All right, so that's a wrap on my desk. Uh, I think it's, I think it suits the, uh, the definition of uh, functionally excellent. Uh, the only problem is, is now uh, I've, uh, I've run out of space in the garage for, uh, for employees, so there's a good chance I'll be uh, giving up this desk to Kyle or Bryce or somebody here soon. Uh, but I guess the good news, that means I get to do it all over again, build another desk somewhere else. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It does serves what I want it to serve. It does all the things I want it to do. It looks the way I want it to look. Uh, and uh, I'm really pleased with all the products I've chosen. Uh, there isn't anything that I would, uh, I would change. Again, I'm going to organize the drawers and, and change the, 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 the doorway and um, maybe make a little adjustment there. But other than that, the, the desk is complete. So. Anyway, I guess stay tuned for the next uh, desk setup when I build the next office or the next uh, building. Uh, but for now, this is it. This is my setup. This is the, these are the products I've chosen, and um, yeah, I'm liking how it uh, how it works. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy.